A middle-aged man sat aboard a ship staring into the ocean, travelling home. That man was Flavius Constantus, and he was travelling home to the province of Moesia, finally coming home to see his newborn son, Constantine, born in the year 272 AD. In his childhood, Constantine spent little time with his father, who was an officer in the Roman army, and a part of the Emperor Aurelian's imperial bodyguard. Every time Constantine saw his father, he saw him in uniform. Constantine was inspired and played with many toy soldiers, pretending to fight great battles, like his heroes in the books. He read about Caesar and Scipio, and he would show his father the great battles that he made. But every year, as Constantine grew older, his father moved further and further away. Not visiting for months, even years at a time. Constantine became tolerant, and eventually a politically skilled man. Eventually Constantus had risen through the ranks and had thus earned the governorship of Dalmatia. But by this time Constantine didn't know his father. The man was just a somewhat familiar face walking through the door. And although Constantine tried hard to be involved with Constantus' governorship, with some success, he was shipped off to Diocletian's court in the east, before he could really get to know his father as he hoped to. And not long after this, his father left to govern the provinces of Gaul and Britannia. To understand more of the story, we must look at how the empire split during this time. The Emperor Diocletian believed that the empire was simply too vast and large for one single man to rule over, or at least to keep the peace. Diocletian knew this as previous emperors struggled to put down revolt in the east and then having to move west to put down more rebellions. Diocletian wanted to divide power so that there were two emperors, acting as equals. So Diocletian drew a line through the middle of the empire and decided one half would be ruled by an emperor, also known as an Augustus, and the same would be done to the other half. It's important for us to note that at this stage it was functionally still one empire, just divided administratively into different regions. Another issue Diocletian recognized was that once an emperor died, there was always uncertainty, which frequently led to conflict. To avoid this, Diocletian wanted to set up clear lines of successions, and a way of accomplishing this, he said, was for the current emperors to choose a man who would be their successor, who would be given the title of Caesar, and would be regarded as the junior emperor. As a Caesar, he would be known to the troops, well learned in governing and politics, and trained in rulership. So when the Augustus died, the successor would be able to take over immediately. This division of power between four men is referred to as the Tetrarchy, meaning rule of four. In the east, it was Diocletian as emperor and Galerius as his Caesar, and in the west, it was Maximian as emperor and Constantius, Constantine's father, as Caesar. Now that we know all the context behind this complicated time period, we are going to turn our attention back to Constantine, who is now receiving formal education at Diocletian's court in the East. Constantine was a bright young man, having learned Latin literature but also Greek and philosophy. Constantine's cultural knowledge was wide. In the city of Nicomedia he could talk with Christian scholars and pagan scholars alike. But because Constantine was a son to one of the four rulers in power, Diocletian never fully trusted him. Whenever Constantine was to join in on important meetings at Diocletian's courts regarding the western half of the empire, he was always shut out, not being allowed in because he was too young. This time shut out allowed Constantine to study the army, as he was fascinated beyond measure about the tales of Caesar and the battles of Scipio. So when the time came to fight, Constantine fought hard for Diocletian in Asia, and served in many campaigns against the barbarians, trying to cross the Danube. He fought the Persians in Syria several times, as well as the string of military victories once again raised Constantine's power, being promoted to a tribune of the First Order. Constantine is coming home. He walks through the streets in a great parade, a triumph in honour of Diocletian's campaigns in the north and east. Constantine is full of joy and pride as he rides in his horse behind the emperors Diocletian and Galerius, shaking the hands and waving to Christians and pagans alike all standing together, united. But this unity wouldn't last long. A few weeks after returning from the Eastern Front, Diocletian orders his infamous Great Persecution. Join us next time as we see the horrors of Diocletian's Great Persecution as Constantine witnesses the biggest persecution of Christians in history. Also check us out on Patreon and Twitter. I'll see you on the next one.